Okay, um, now today we're going to have a little chat about uh, understanding your hepatitis B viral load levels. A lot of patients with Hep B, they do a test called the hepatitis B DNA test, but they seldom really understand what it means. There's a lot of worries about, oh, my level goes up a bit or down a bit. Some patients are sort of living in terror. They think for some reason the levels are suddenly going to go up and, oh, no, you know, their lives will be in danger. Um, not really something that happens. Um, but here we go. Let's just talk about hepatitis B viral loads. First of all, what is the HBV? DNA level. What is all this about? Well, basically, it's the amount of HBV DNA circulating in the blood. And we measure it with um, international units uh, per milliliter of blood. You'll often see IU forward slash ML. A milliliter, you've got a liter of blood, well, one thousandth of that is, is more like kind of a droplet, um, and, and, and we measure. Unfortunately, the idiot doctors measure it in units sometimes, and in copies sometimes, and in logs sometimes. You know, find out you've got a virus infection that can be dangerous, and next thing you know, they're giving you all these chaotic different ways of counting up how much problem you've got in your bloodstream. So, let's explain what this is. Um, there are 5.5 copies to every unit, so it's that simple. You have a, a thousand international units, you'll have about 5,500 copies. So that's the difference between <coughs> the DNA level in units and the DNA level in copies, it's very simple, just times by five and you've got the amount of copies. Now, these log numbers, uh, a lot of patients get their hepatitis B DNA result, uh, and oh my god, it's in some sort of mathematical algebra to drive you around the bend. Not good. I really wish laboratories did not play these games with people's emotions. But it, it is quite simple. Um, they write this like your number is 3 times by 10 times by 7. And what it means is 3 times 7 add 7 noughts. Um, so a 3 with 7 noughts is 30 million. 3 times 10 times 7 is a 30 million level. Um, and here we see a, uh, a test result that, that does all this for you. Um, gives you all the numbers. It's an interesting result. Uh, and there they go. Um, they've got 5 times 2 noughts. Uh, so it's 500 IUML. And in copies it's 2,500. So there you see how it works. It's 5 basically times 10 to the power of 2, which means 5 plus 2 zeros. So 500. And then 1 EU equals about 5 copies. So that's how you work this out. Your logs are just naught, so the copies are times 5. So there you go. Why do we need to know the HBV DNA level? Why do doctors test for this? Well, if your level is 10 million to 1,000 million units, um, it's really quite dangerous. And it's also very infectious. You, know, you will be sexually infectious with this sort of level. You, you know, you can infect every partner quite quickly. Um, also, with that amount of virus in your bloodstream, um, the risk of cirrhosis, liver cancer after 30 years is getting very high. We're very worried about people with that level. Um, it's usually 
hepatitis B E antigen positive, and uh, when we see that, it, it, it's a very good idea to um, get you on medicine. It's also a big concern that if you drink alcohol with that or get obese with that, well, you know, we're worried about your life. If the level is from 1 million to 10 million, um, that sort of level can often cause permanently slightly high out ast readings. And again, this is something that can be damaging the liver all by itself. Um, so again, uh, concern. The levels are 100,000 to about 1 million. Usually, you know, sometimes there's no sign of that raising the ALTs and, and the ASTs and the liver is quite happy. But we need to watch that level a lot more closely because any toxins in the lifestyle, um, we would expect sometimes the, uh, the, the liver could start to malfunction and have high results. Levels below 100,000 often usually don't raise, you know, or affect the liver a lot. Um, and then levels below 5,000 often never ever have, have an effect at all. But so we always do a DNA test because then we can see how much virus we're dealing with. And each level has a common different type of effect. Why do we check yearly? Well, first of all, is to, to see that the level stays stable, that it, it you know, it's not uh, and 95% of levels, 99% usually stays pretty much the same. Um, sometimes it goes down. It's more common for it to go down um, over the years. The immune system seems to get a better grip on the virus. And I've seen a lot go from, say, quarter of a million to 100,000 to 30,000, things like that. But more rarely, it might go up a little bit. So we like to just keep a check on it. Um, now, if you're not taking Hep B treatment, the level of your viral load can fluctuate between tests. It's always going to be going up and down. It goes up with every meal a little bit. It goes down with every sleep a little bit. So, you know, don't panic if it's 10,000 one time or 5,000 another time. This is just eating and sleeping. Um, even a doubling of your viral load is not usually significant if it goes from 5 to 10, something like that. You don't know. Vaccinations such as a flu jab, alcohol, lack of sleep, or an infection like malaria or even a flu uh, can, you know, see the level go up like five times easily, you know, from 10,000 to 50,000. For example, an increase from 5 to 15 shouldn't be a cause of worry when you're not on treatment. A rise even from 50,000 to 100,000 may not be significant. We just keep checking it every year, see what it does, every six months, see what it does. The key is whether the viral level is affecting the out and the other readings. This is important. You know, it doesn't matter what your level is. If your level's 100,000 and your outs are sort of 200, then you've got to think about medicine and antiviral treatment. Um, why do we need to check yearly the DNA level? Oh, that's to confirm that it's stable, yeah, and all those things. Then just a couple of examples of, of, of the tests for you to see. Um, this is a very common test. It says, you know, uh, undetectable. Um, the viral load is under 20. But very often you see that's HBSAG quantitative. It's a different test. It's the, this is the amount of uh, virus that's in the bloodstream. You can see it's 1,700 about one year, and the next year is 2,000. It's staying about the same. What we watch is how much does it create heavy DNA in the bloodstream. That's a different thing. Some people will, will have a viral level that's there of SABG, but how much Hep B DNA is it creating is what we watch. Because if the Hep B DNA is high, then, then we're concerned it can be dangerous. This patient was actually on medication to have this low level. This patient was not on medication. You can see his hepatitis B viral level is uh, just 
206, completely harmless trace, forget about it, you know. Uh, you know, sometimes I wish that these type of levels, the patient was never diagnosed. Because they're never going to get ill, they're never going to affect anyone, it's a tiny trace. But there it is, it's, it's a little bit left behind f from when they caught Hep B, maybe when they were children. This is uh, another load, it's 56,739, a sort of uh, low, medium type load. Um, it will be a level where we'd recommend liver function tests every year or so, keep an eye on it. If the liver tests are normal, you know, forget about it, just keep, you know, annual checks, uh, maybe 10 years will go by, it'll still all just be normal and 56,000 usually. Um, and down below we see a more concerning uh, hepatitis B DNA viral level. Uh, this chap has got, uh, you're looking at 9 million there. He's got a 9, 10 million level. Um, that's quite a bit, you know, if it's 9 or 10 million or 50 million or 100 or 500 million or a billion. Once we get up to these higher levels, um, very often we'll find that the liver is creating more enzymes. It's struggling away, constantly trying to control a large amount of virus in the bloodstream. And we think about medicating that. That level usually always has um, hepatitis B E antigen behind it. So we'll medicate, try and kill the E antigen, bring it down to something like this or something like this. So, so these are hepatitis B viral loads. Um, it's very important not to panic when they fluctuate. They always fluctuate. Very important not to think too much about, oh, you know, they're going to go up. They don't. They tend to stay very stable for a long life. Um, I had one case where the viral load went from 10,000 to 90,000, but the woman was drinking a bottle of wine every night for 10 years. You see how it works. You abuse your liver in other ways, and then the viral load will go up. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, in the same way, if you gradually fill your liver with fat, makes you got a great big fat tummy, and you're eating lots of greasy meat and oil, lots of oily fried food, the liver is struggling away with all this rubbish, and then the viral load can be going up. It's as if the liver is having to concentrate on all these problems. The more problems you give your liver, the more chance that the viral load will start to, to, to go up. If you drink, if you're on a load of paracetamol, tramadol for years, if you're pouring all this fat through your liver, um, the liver's just got so many jobs, it doesn't do the viral load suppression so well. Um, and so this is it, a hep B viral load. Um, Learn about it, monitor it, it's sort of staying in the same range. I've got one patient who's 77, and his viral load, you know, sometimes it's 1,000, the next time it's 5,000, the next time it's 3,000. It's always ringing and panicking that, you know, it moves about a little bit. Um, he's been diagnosed for, I think, 27 years, his viral load's been wobbling around like that. Um, he's still fit as a fiddle. He's 77. He, he does these little long distance fun runs for the charity. Um, but every year he rings up in a panic because the number's slightly different. And no, he's never going to get ill. His liver's perfect. His viral load's too tiny. Um, it's important to realize that the viral load is something we can control with medicines if ever it's high and uh, it seldom goes very high.